<coughs> All right. So I'm going to go over some subtraction problems with borrowing for everyone. Um, the students seem to be struggling, so I'm going to do a few examples where we have to subtract and borrow across zeros, or we just have to borrow in general. So I'm going to go ahead and do two problems with you. So the first I'm going to do is 300 minus 128. So when we look at our problem like this, we have to try to solve it. So if I have zero, can I take away eight? So the example I was using with the kids was something um, similar to like, if I needed eight or if someone asked me for eight dollars and I had zero dollars, would I be able to give them zero dollars? The answer is no, because I don't have anything. I have zero. So that means I'm going to have to go next door and borrow. So when I go next door, this is zero. So I can't borrow from someone else that doesn't have anything. So my neighbor is actually going to have to borrow from their neighbor. So they're going to take away one from this two, and they're going to add 10 to their neighbor. So when you borrow, you're going to take away one and always add 10 to whatever numbers here. So now that my neighbor has 10, I can borrow from them. So I can ask for one. They're going to change to a nine. And then my zero is going to change to a 10. Now I can subtract. So 10 minus 8 is 2. 9 minus 2. See, if I have a problem and I can't do it in my head, you can draw tally marks. 4, 5, 6, and 8. And they can take away 2. 1, 2. And then they would count how many are left over. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oops, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And I forgot one. So make sure you count for tally marks because I messed up. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven. And then two minus one is one. So make sure when you're borrowing, you have to borrow from your neighbors. And when you do, you have to change all your numbers. Let's go ahead and do another example. We'll do another one across zeros. So 500 minus 317. So I can't do 0 minus 7, so I have to go next door. But my next door neighbor doesn't have anything, so they're going to have to go next door. So I'm going to cross out my 5. We're going to take away 1, which makes it 4. We're going to add 10 to my 0. Now I can go ahead and borrow from my 10. So my 10 becomes a 9. My 0 becomes a 10. So 10 minus 7 is... 3, 9 minus 1 is 8, 5 minus 3 is, or 4 minus 3 is 1. So that's how you do borrowing across zeros. Let's do one that doesn't just have zeros. Let's do 400 minus 182 minus 184. So when I am subtracting, I'm going to always start on the one side. So 2 minus 4. If I have 2, so 1, 2, can I take away 4? I can't because I don't have 4 things to take away. I only have 2. So that means I'm going to have to go to my neighbor. My neighbor has a number that I can borrow from. So I'm going to take away 1. It's going to become a 6. Now I'm going to add 10 to my 2. So 10 plus 2 is 12. 12 minus 4. So if you can't do that in your head, draw your tally mark. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I'm going to take away 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So I have 8 left over. So 12 minus 4 is 8. 6 minus 8. I can't take 8 out of 6 because 6 is smaller. So I'm going to have to go next door, mark out my 4. Whoops, it's going to become a 3 because I'm going to borrow 1. 10 plus 6 is 16. So 16 minus 8 is 8. 3 minus 1 is 2. So I had to borrow twice, but it was not across zeros this time. Let's try another one we have to borrow. Um, 
six five five. So seven hundred ninety four minus six hundred fifty five. So I start in my ones place. Zero or four minus five. I can't do it, so I have to borrow from next door. So my nine changes to an eight. Ten plus four is fourteen. So fourteen minus five. If you need, you can draw your tally marks. Um, 14 minus 5 is 9, so 8 minus 5 is 3, 7 minus 6 is 1. So those are some examples of when you have to regroup or borrow from next door. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments and I can go ahead and help you out. Or you can send me a message. Um, try to do some practice examples on your own. If you would like a couple, here are two examples you can try on your own. Let's see if you can get them right. Let's see. All right. So go ahead and try to do these two on your own. And remember, you can watch this video to help you remember how to borrow when you're subtracting.